Let's take a look at rate of change and slope. Rate of change and slope are very closely related. Rate of change just talks about how one quantity is changing with respect to another quantity. And slope is another way that we can talk about that. In most general terms, slope can be simplified to be just rise over run. And one way to look at that is if we have two ordered pairs on the coordinate plane, and I can determine the rise or the vertical movement and the run or the horizontal movement to get me from one to the other, that will give me my slope. Now, slope allows us to give a numerical value to the steepness of a line. And if you're in construction, for example, dealing with the roofs of buildings, that would be really important to know. So let's just take a look at this. All right, so for this first one, I want to figure out how I need to get from this point to this point. Or we could go the other way. We'll look at that in a little bit. But what I want to do is figure out how much I need to go up or down. Well, I need to go down how many units? Let's see down one so that's gonna be my rise now when I go down or to the left my value is negative so down or to the left that's a negative value when I go up or to the right that's a positive value so in this case I went down one so that's gonna be negative one that's my rise then my run Let's see how far it is over to our point. So moving over, one, two, three, four. And we're going to the left, which is positive, so we have negative one-fourth. Okay, now I said we could go the other way as well. So let's look at that and just make sure that we come up with the same thing. So let's say we started at this point and we're trying to get to the other one. Well, first thing the rise first so we would go up one okay so that's gonna be a positive one like so over the run in this case we're gonna go to the left so one two three four to get to our point and since we went to the left that's a negative four and sure enough those fractions are equal to each other remember the negative could be on the top number could be on the bottom number same thing so we have a slope of negative one-fourth. All right, let's take a look at this next one here. Again, a matter of figuring out how we go about getting from one point to the other in terms of the rise and run. So from this point, let's start here. We need to go up two units, okay? So we go up two, so that's my rise, two. And then I figure out my run, so how far is it over? We go one, two, three. So my run is three. They're both positive because I went up and to the right, and there's my slope, two thirds. Now, let's take a look at some of these are uh, these graphs and talk about the type of slope that we see. Okay, these first two right here are the ones that are probably most confusing. Now let's think about this for a second. Right here, we have a rise of what? Well, we're rising nothing. It's just going up, not at all. It's just going left or right. So the rise would be zero over a run of, well, that could be anything, but what are we ultimately going to get? Let's say it's five. Well, zero divided by anything is just zero. So this is an example of a slope of zero has zero slope okay because we get that there's zero rise and the run well anything divided by zero again is zero alright then how about this one now the rise on this one could be any particular number but where does this one get a little goofy let's say again the rise is five we could say one whatever but the run the left or right movement is zero. Uh-oh, we can't divide by zero. That's undefined. So a vertical line is an example of an undefined slope. Okay, so those two. Now, 
One way that you might be able to remember that, here's a way that I like to remember it, if you're laying down, what are you going to accomplish? Zero. Just lay around all the time, you're not going to accomplish anything. But if you stand up and get after it, it's undefined what you can accomplish. You can accomplish great, great things, undefined amount. Okay, so hopefully that's a way that can help you remember zero slope and undefined slope. Now, these two, well, one of them's positive and one of them's negative. If we look at them from left to right, we can read to see which one's positive. And the way that I like to think of it, another example, think of it like a investment, like a stock market. Okay, We want the stock market, as we go from left to right, to go up. And that's what's happening here. We started here, and as we move from left to right, it's going up, which is a great thing, so that's positive. Okay, If the graph of your stocks looks like this, we're happy. That's positive. Okay. Here, however, as we go from left to right, it's going down. Yikes. Okay, we don't like that. That is a negative slope. Now, we talk about it as positive or negative, but that's the type of numerical slope that we should have as well. So make sure when you're finding slopes that if the graph looks like this, that you have a negative numbered slope. Okay, That's something that I see get mixed up quite a bit, but if you do that little check, hopefully you can eliminate that potential error. So let's look back here just to see that. This one is going down from left to right, and sure enough, look at that. We had a negative numerical slope. And this one is going up from left to right, positive slope. All right. Rate of change in slope. Rate of change is another way to talk about slope. In its most general form, slope is simply rise over run. Two R words. A way that you can remember that is alphabetical. Rise over run. Rise comes before run. Different types of slope. Zero and undefined. Remember, it's undefined because we're trying to divide by zero because there's no run. Or the zero slope is because we're rising zero in that rise over run form. Then here, a negative slope going down from left to right and a positive slope going up from left to right. Hope this video is helpful. Keep working hard on your math. You can do it.